So all this week on the show, we've had a chance to kind of have a financial literacy 101 week, courtesy of Tennessee Valley Federal Credit Union. They've been funly calling it, funly, that's a new word today, know your dough. I was smiling because Tammy Zumbrin is back on the show and she and I kind of had a quick eye connect and I stumbled upon my words, but she's back with the credit union along with Nick Townsend. So as we head into the weekend, a couple of days away, Nick is going to give us a homework assignment, get a cup of coffee, sit down in the kitchen and secure your money this weekend. So good to see you both. Good to be here. Um, we're not talking really the credit union specifically, Nick, because the tips you're going to share are good for all of our digital protections of our accounts, whether it's money, whether it's your Facebook account, whether it's anything, right? That's correct. You know, one of the things that we need to be conscious of in this day in technology is passwords are not secure. Uh, if you have a six, eight, or ten character password, those can be easily guessed fairly quickly with today's technology. What I would strongly advise people on is to use past phrases or multi-factor authentication mechanisms to help secure their accounts. What does that mean? That's like the thing now where you type in your password and it sends you a text? Yes, it could be a text. It could be a multi-factor authentication application like Duo or a token like RSA. Some people, I have young, you know, teenage and early 20s daughters, uh, they on their phones, for example, they do the face identification. I don't really like that because what if I had to get on their phone and they couldn't be there to look at it? That is correct. Uh, face identification is one of the strongest mechanisms of security. However, you can use authentication bypass and still use your password or PIN number that you know. Okay, so let's go back to those passwords. There isn't a single person watching who is not crying yeah. right now because you're saying that we need to up it and, and yes. really change them frequently and all of that. Do you need to have a different password for pretty much everything you do. I would strongly advise having different passwords for different authentication systems, whether that's the utilities, that's the credit union, or if that's your school account, you should have a different password. However, you can make passwords easier to remember by using passphrases. Instead of having a 14 character password, you could use a sentence like the blue fox jumps over the red hill. And that's something that only you would be able to remember. And that can be your password. And you can change that for each and every account you have. So if you went to UTC, you can say, I'm a fan of the football program. That would be a great password if you were to integrate numbers, upper and lowercase letters and exclamation points. But then if you needed one uh, passphrase for your utility company, uh, EPB provides strong power. That could be another passphrase. And that's easy to remember for each and every person. Okay because those that's a great idea um, because those passwords though are so difficult to remember i'm one who i always tell my phone yes save this password that way i can just do it rapidly right is that a good idea or a bad idea <clears throat> sometimes that's not necessarily a good idea and i can see why weak password uh systems or uh, uh, applications like KeyPass that store your password may not be secure forever. So if you store your password in your browser, uh, that could be taken from you without you knowing. So I advised against storing passwords in browsers. Um, when Tammy, earlier in the week, we were talking about one of the great uh, easy ways of using TVFCU is that you have people who have a lot of different fund accounts. I have a couple of different accounts. Mm -hmm. People have far more than I do probably. So would you need to have a different password for each of those accounts? Uh, you would not. If you use our mobility or our online platform, you would have one username to access all your accounts, and we encourage the multi-factor authentication mechanism. Okay. Something else that you've said, and I've heard this from somebody else, just not official, you're official, <laughs> is all those games that you see on Facebook, you know, tell us when you met your husband and your first date and all those things. Those are risky, why? They're extremely risky because the questions they ask are often uh, password recovery questions. If you forgot your password and you hit the forgot password link and it's gonna drive you to a couple of predetermined questions that you've already answered, like where did you go to junior high? Or what year was your mother born? Or what is your favorite oh. color? So when you see these activities, these quizzes, these games on social media, that's literally information mining. It's a social engineering tactic and I advise everybody to stop completing those quizzes, do not participate in those. Uh, and that's really for personal hygiene to protect your security. 
how is there a rule of thumb about how often we should change passwords? You know, that's a great question. Used to, it would be advised to change your passwords frequently. And the shorter passwords do need to be changed. However, if you use a passphrase that's 20 or 30 characters in length, you may not have to change that password until it's compromised or you feel that it's been compromised. Okay, but back to your idea of using the sentences. which the I pass think Passphrases, it's yes ma'am. Pass phrases. Yes ma'am. Okay, I think that's a good idea. But if you do have one that, I, you know, I support the UTC mocks or whatever. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you have to have a, a number in there or a character in there. You do. You can integrate uh, the number one for the letter I or add a special <laughs> character. Or You're killing me, Small. And then we <laughs> have to remember yeah. it, Julie. Yeah. That's that's hard. Hard. Yeah. Do you know that movie? Do you I know do. the Sandlot? I do. Okay, sorry. Do. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. Okay, so should you have a notebook where you write all these passwords <laughs> down? You know, uh, to each is his own, but, you know, if, if your passwords are written down, they can be stolen from you. They can be compromised unless you are protecting oh. them. So <laughs> We're stuck is what that means, yeah. Julie. That's why I the mean. passphrases are easy to remember. <laughs> You really have to go by the authentication mechanism of the application you're using. I mean, if you had a 30 character password, they may not require a special character. Okay, but wait a minute. So I'm going to think about my husband and me for a second, okay? And let's assume that, because I have my accounts, he has his accounts, we have some things that are joint. But if something happened and we needed access to either one of our individual accounts without the other one, you'd need to know what those passwords are. And if he's got one account where he's changed the password and it's Julie makes me so mad I'm never washing the dishes again, I would never have a way of knowing that right. unless he's written it down. That's correct. So That's you do correct. have to have some written record. You, you, you need to have a method to ensure that your spouse or whoever has access to your accounts if you need. If not, you can call for support. Every, every institution or application has an ability to recover the password. Right, and, and if you're joint on each other's accounts, then if you call in and give all the you know proper identification right. when you do that, then they're going to go ahead and give you information you would need on that account. Yeah, that's why you. joint owners are important. That's also why when you go to the doctor's office, it's good to have that other person when they say, can we let so and, uh -huh. you know, somebody know if right. there's an emergency. If you've given access right. to it, then they don't necessarily have to have your password. But you know that's a risk when you give your password to anybody, even when it's a family member. So, and, I, and I know that you wanted this information to be just kind of universal application here, not credit union specific, but the fact that here you are, uh, that's your job uh, within the credit union, means that the credit union also is taking all of these measures to protect the investments of your members, right? That is Absolutely. correct. And I, I think you see that. That's why you're seeing everybody going to two-factor. And, you know, it seems on our side when we're not in that... <clears throat> IT world, it can be very frustrating to think, oh man, I have to have another password, or I have to do this. Mm -hmm. But if we think in terms of that institution is really trying to just protect us, mm -hmm. it gives us a whole different perspective on having to take those extra steps. I'm going to have to wrap it up. I know that while you're um, the ITMs that are there, did I say that right? ITMs? Yes. The seven to seven where you can go and talk to somebody uh, through the computer that's there, people can go in and still talk to real life people at the credit union, if they ever wanted to come in and just say, look, kind of guide me here to make sure I'm protected, can they do that? We do offer assistance uh, for some aspects of that. Um, you know, we don't want to give you technology advice. However, sure. if you think that your account's compromised, we have a whole team dedicated to ensuring that your accounts are secure. Okay. Or if you thought you've lost your password, you just need to call into the call center and uh, they will get you with the right team. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I'm gonna have to go buy a notebook now so I can write down all my passwords. And then I'm going to have to sit down and change them this weekend because I have the same one for everything. Just remember, past phrases will save you. Yeah. I think I'd be kind of boring for a hacker because I just have the same thing for everything. Oh. Thank you both. My pleasure. Thank you. I didn't really say that. She didn't say that out loud. <laughs> I don't really. TVFCU.com. I'm digging myself a deep hole here. Uh, you can learn more by calling their main number, 634-3600. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Maybe I'll make my past phrase... Nick Townsend is really awesome, exclamation point. It, it will get immediately <laughs> compromised. <laughs> <laughs>